at his permaculture farm. Hey there. Jay, you want to tell these guys a little bit about what permaculture is and what we're seeing, like these these rows of, of the branches and the mulching and the different, you know, I see jackfruits and papayas and bananas and all kinds of things. Well, so, so permaculture is really a design science. If you want to look at permaculture, that's really what it is. But it's, it's a blend of two words, permanent and agriculture. So that's, how, that's what the word is, and that's what, how it came about. And the idea is a more permanent agriculture rather than over and over and over mining the soil. Mm -hmm. Regenerative. And... The ultimate ecosystem in permaculture would be something that's called a food forest to where you have a mixture of plants and trees uh -huh. that make up yeah. a forest. Like agroforestry. And it's, okay. it's, it's more or less as much as possible self-sustaining. Mm. And it emulates a forest by having all the elements of a forest. Like you would have low growing plants, medium plants. You could have a vine layer that, that's in between. Mm -hmm. You could have the main structure of the forest and then you could even have emergent trees that come out above it. It's the most stable system you can develop because think about it, who tends the forest? Who fertilizes the forest? Who waters the forest? It doesn't need that. Exactly. And so if That's you can, a great point. if you can get it all ready, all working that way, it should act like a forest. But rather than being just a, a natural forest, it's human interaction to make choices. Yeah. Like I chose plant a fruit tree here and a fruit tree there these are jackfruit and they're gonna get big yeah but then in between I put a papaya tree mm -hmm. it's a short-lived yeah tree. that'll be gone by the time these guys are up and fruiting so you're not worried about the canopy overshadowing the, the papaya well, awesome I've already got a, a succession started that's a moringa tree oh wow so I love these so when the uh, papaya is done, mm -hmm. the moringa can take over and it can give you perennial greens for year and years and years. And you can cut it back. It doesn't mind being cut back. So it won't be a lot of competition with mm -hmm. the jackfruit. Moringa is very, very high in nutrition and all kinds of different health benefits. Um, they call that uh, something funny over in the in Africa, like the poverty tree or something, because no matter how poor you're doing, you're gonna live if you have the moringa tree. Yeah. You know, so that's a really great choice there. I, I dry it and put it in a shaker mm -hmm. and just keep it like you would salt and pepper on yeah. the table. You just shake a little bit. It's a supplement. Awesome. All the time. That's good stuff. It's I ready had to one go. outside in Key West and every morning just go out there and grab a few leaves, throw it in the blender with whatever else I was making for a smoothie. So to build the succession, just think about it. In that forest, nobody fertilizes it, but the forest pulls things, pulls elements out of the ground, mm -hmm. drops it and recycles it yeah. over and over and over. I'm speeding that up. So I went exactly. and got wood wow. that people were going to either burn or throw away or whatever they were going to do. Mm -hmm. And people gave me wood so I'm adding that into the mix to speed everything up. Plus the mulch is gonna speed it up. Mm -hmm. And like we were talking about, you got the different layers. On the ground here is a plant called Sunshine Mimosa. Uh -huh. And it's a ground cover. You can see it's starting to spread. Yeah, yeah. That's since July I planted them. Mm -hmm. I planted you got four. a cool little bloom there. Yep. I bet the bees just really love that. They do. It's a little powder puff. I've I've noticed the bees around here just everywhere. They you know, love if you that look basil. at the flowers for a little bit on the basil, you'll just see bees everywhere. Um, 
Yeah, well, there's it a lot of It feels like hives. I'm in the forest, yet it's managed by you in, in a sustainable way. That's just too neat. Yeah, that's the goal. Like, I just put that in this week, mm -hmm. a tomato. Mm -hmm. So every, I'm going to get some things that are not yeah. perennial. Yeah. Because there's some advantages to that. Oh, and yeah. Tomatoes, you can't beat them. Mm -hmm. So I, I mix in. That's a that's a uh, an edible green, and it's perennial, yeah. more or less perennial. Yeah, love it. You know this system. It kind of reminds me of what I was doing um, in Puerto Rico. Here, if you take that for a minute, Jay, that way I could use my hands. Yeah. See, in Puerto Rico, what I was doing was called alley cropping with agroforestry. So imagine if you didn't have these bananas here. And then you're going in and putting in like an actual row crop like corn or right. beans or something like that. And you've got all that coming in. And we would do use different kinds of uh, trees, for example, that would grow pretty fast. And that way, when you canopy over, it blocks the weeds from wanting to come up. And by the time you're ready to plant your corn, you just cut back. Um, you cut back those branches that grow back really fast, use that as mulch like you're doing right here. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you've got enough sunlight um, for everybody to do their thing. You know, so it, it's pretty neat, like especially when farmers like us get together and start um, bouncing ideas off of each other because, you know, this isn't something new. You know, people have been doing this for thousands and thousands and thousands of years. When you didn't have a tractor or a plow, mm -hmm. you basically planted wherever you could. Yeah. And you really didn't have a lot of choices, so things were mixed up anyway. Yep, yep. exactly. Now, I think it's just an incredible little place here. Um, you know, just from what I'm seeing, I can see some pineapples over here and, um, you know, different herbs growing in and around, papayas and bananas you know all different kinds of stuff jackfruit um that's that's some of the most amazing fruit you know if you guys have ever tried a uh, jackfruit um barbecue style you yep. know where it'll actually jackfruit is delicious just raw um but you can cook it and make it taste like a, a meat for those vegans out there even the um, nuts they're high protein yeah nuts, oh yeah it's the great seeds. you add a little barbecue sauce the on seeds. there some sweet baby ray and then all of a sudden hey Feels like you're eating a pulled pork sandwich. <laughs> yeah. um, so it's a great little tip for those vegans out there. If you wonder why um, that jackfruit's so expensive too at the farmer's market, you know, it takes a long time for these to grow. Um, there's a long period between harvests and there's not a whole lot of it around. Um, so of course it's expensive, but the more of us that go around planting it and make it an available um, to our growers and to our farmer's markets, you know, that's how we reduce those costs, you know eat local, eat seasonal, you know, and, and, and do what you can each day. Well, come up this way, walk, walk around this way, and uh, I can show you where I want to be in a few years. Oh, awesome. Because when I bought the place, it already had some mature trees. <laughs> mm-hmm. And they were grown conventionally, just the way you would normally grow a, a fruit orchard, mm -hmm. trees and trees and trees but I've already got pretty close to a functioning forest. Yeah. In, and they're mangoes. Oh, wow, yeah, I can see from here. So they're about 10 years old, the trees are. Beautiful. But I've been working with it for two years. Nice. So I started out by planting all the support plants, we call them, in mm -hmm. permaculture. And well, what's an example of a support plant? You know, um, okay. uh, for those of us uh, that don't know. In a forest, you've got, like I said, the layers. Mm -hmm. So in order to block out weeds, a ground cover yep. is one, one Beautiful example. Beautiful job there. What do you got growing here? This is called Thai pepper. Oh. And it's actually an edible leaf. The people in Thailand will fold it up like that, put a little different foods in there. Oh, cool. And eat it. Oh, wow. As a wrap. Neat. A little wrap. Awesome. How cool is that? And that's what you're doing to keep the weeds out so you don't have to use herbicides. Yep. Me. One example. So I, you can't see them in here right now, but a lot of people know what turmeric is. Mm-hmm. Turmeric has gone dormant yeah. right now. Yeah. But that's the turmeric. It was up 
up like this last year. Great for memory. I take that a lot. <laughs> Make a little turmeric milk. Huh? Oh, yeah. I put in some pretty stuff. That's the uh, angel's trumpet. Mm. Just uh, just because I like to see the flowers. Yeah. Smells good. Oh, yeah. But I've got uh, in between each mango tree, and that one's in good bloom yeah, right this now. this one's blooming really good. Wow. So in between each mango tree, I have a monstera uh -huh. plant. Yep. And it will make an edible fruit eventually. It'll take about a year or two. Yeah. This is amazing. I'm getting ready to build a house over here on, on the property. So I've been collecting a few ornamentals, things like this, that are really just ornamentals. I'm parking them in here for yeah. now. When I build the house, all my landscaping plants are ready to go. Awesome. This is such a neat place. So I had, in here I had taro last summer, and we're still eating the taro. It was harvested, and uh -huh. we're eating it as a carbohydrate uh -huh. source. Nice. All natural, good stuff. Yeah. I have uh, gingers in here. They like anything that grows in a forest, and the gingers are natural for that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The taro Love is, gingers. A, is a natural yep, for that. Yep. Um, the monstera. More tumor. I'm hoping they'll be uh, kind of dominate. Mm-hmm. Between the monstera and the Thai pepper, that'll pretty much do mm -hmm. my ground cover and my mm -hmm. medium. Even yep. got coffee. Got some mangoes blooming up there too. Oh, so right. that's a, that's a coffee tree. So I've yep. got a dozen coffee trees in here. Nice. One coffee tree per month. <laughs> All right. I get can grow my own coffee. Oh, that's too cool. Be self sufficient. That's on that's coffee. a it's a pretty neat feeling, isn't it? You know, I love <laughs> that about Puerto Rico. I. Uh, I was farming a 120 year old organic coffee and banana farm. Mm -hmm. And boy, it was just something special to make your coffee over an open fire every morning because uh -huh. you didn't have electricity. <laughs> and knowing that that was you putting every bit of love and effort and with a little help of mother nature, of course. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just managing mother nature. I truly feel like that's what humans were designed for. You know, that we, we have a big mind and, and maybe it was for simply being able to put a balance in, 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 in restoration and earth. So when something gets out of line, we can put it in line. But often it seems like it's us that's out of line. <laughs> there's, there's a guy that I follow, he uses the word symbiont. Mm. And that word means someone who cooperates. Yeah, I like and, that. And uh, mutually, mutual exchange. I love so that. So the mangoes are given to me, I'm given back to them giving them a better condition. This was basically just mangoes, sand, and leaves. Yeah, and you're making your own dirt. So I'm, I've developed a little bit of an ecosystem. Yeah, can't wait to get some Biofeed Soil Plus on here and get the oxygen up and start making the dirt even faster. Well, it's all, all irrigated. Uh -huh. It's hard to see now. Yeah, I see that. But every plant I put in, I have some little tubings. Mm -hmm. And the tubings are all here. Mm -hmm. That one goes to the coffee. And it's can... probably on well water, right? Yeah. You know, as I'm seeing, we got, you know, iron from when it's dripping out. That's another great thing about the biofeed is it has a chelator in there where you can make that iron accessible to the plant. <laughs> yeah, you um, know, I told get you. Get some use out of it. I told you I grew, grew 